Good evening, everyone, and welcome to my overview of the Anime Expo Gundam VIP event of summer 2022. In this video, I'll be going over the entire event, including some interesting tidbits that they gave us for the various upcoming games, and of course, the upcoming G Witch anime, and also the live action movie. But first things first, the event was an absolute blast, so I'm super happy that Bandai invited me over. And of course, I wasn't the only one who was invited either. Also staying at my hotel were New Type Seiji and Niki Marina. And if you haven't heard of them before, you should totally check them out. So I'll have their channels linked down below. And they were also super cool to hang out with. And we also kind of snuck into the VIP event before it officially opened up by telling the guy at the door who we were. Um, so we got to see how they set up the event and we could also snap some early pictures. And the first thing that we immediately noticed was how the venue really felt like a VIP launch. There were like fancy sofas in the front, bar stools and tables in the back, the lighting was perfect, and then once the event actually began, there was also free food and free drinks. And they weren't stingy with them either. You could just walk over and grab whatever drink you wanted. There was a popcorn machine and waiters walking around with uh, small wraps and hamburgers. Honestly, the presentation was totally on point. And while you were enjoying this, you could also check out the display cases that were on the side. And there really was a bit of everything. You had the Gundam Artifact line, some Robot Damashis, G-Frame, Gundam Converge, the Metal Build Justice, the upcoming G-Witch kits, and more. Including, of course, the two highlights, the Real Great God Gundam and the Master Great Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. Seeing that golden inner frame in real life really was something else. Or if you wanted to do something more active, there was also a retro gaming corner with uh, G Gundam for the Super Nintendo, Battle Assault for the PlayStation 1, and Mobile Suit Saga for the PlayStation 2. For modern gaming then, there were a bunch of PlayStation 5s for Gundam Battle Operation 2 and SD Gundam Battle Alliance. And for people who wanted to give Gunpla a shot, there was also a building station where you could build the RX-72 Gundam Building Experience version that was included with the goodie bag that everyone got. So again, there really was something for everyone even for people who weren't really all that well versed in Gundam. So even if they like just tried to get a VIP ticket for the hell of it, they got a pretty good introduction to what Gundam is all about. And talking about a nice introduction, as you enter the venue, they also had a good lineup of Gundams you could take a picture with. The RX-782 and Unicorn because of course, uh, the Wing Gundam, which helped kickstart Gundam in the US and as a result in many other countries as well. And the Barbs, which is currently the Gundam that is getting a lot of people into the fandom. And with that, let's move on to the panels. First up was the Gunpla panel, which was co-hosted by Mecha Maiden. And this basically went as you'd expect. They showed off the high-grade Gundam Aerial, high-grade Gundam Lubrith, or Lufrith, and the Beggar Bow from G-Witch. Then there was, of course, the Master Grid Extreme Freedom Gundam, both with and without the armor. And finally, there was also the God Gundam. Now, unfortunately, they didn't show us anything new for any of the kits. Like, it would have been cool if they could have at least confirmed some of the accessories they came with at that event. Something that could have been especially relevant for the Begwir. Uh, during the presentation, they showed it on an action base, and Mecha Maiden rightfully wondered if the thing could even stand on its own, because, well, those feet don't really look the most stable, let's put it like that. And at the time, I remember wondering if that stand was going to be included or not. And what I realized after watching the footage again is that the stand is the one that is meant for the non-kinetic pod. Meaning that you'll get at least that stand, which can be used for the begware, 
but I don't think it's a bad idea to still buy a separate action base for the Begware itself. During the presentation, it was glued to a much bigger base to prevent it from falling, and just look at how much it's swaying from left to right. The second topic then was video games, and the first game they showed off was the Gumpla Scan game, which will get its own dedicated video because I was lucky enough to get to try it out. Uh, so next up there was Gundam Evolution, the Gundam based first person shooter. And it shouldn't surprise you that when they talked about their target audience, it's both younger people, but also people for outside of Japan. Two things you can definitely tell by the genre they went with, because you tell me a Japanese developed first person shooter without googling it. Uh, so this definitely seems to go along with their mission statement of developing the Gundam brand not just in Japan, but also overseas. And this also shows with the people working on the game. They're not just some haphazardly thrown together team, but instead consist of many pro players from Overwatch, PUBG and so on. And with this professional input, one of their biggest priorities is balancing the game. So combined with the first tests being successful, both for the players and for the developers, I think Gundam Evolution is looking really good so far. And there was still more. As you've probably noticed, the lineup of playable mobile suits isn't just focused on the main Gundams and you have a lot of secondary mobile suits and even some like really minor variations like the Marasai from Unicorn. And this variety is definitely something they plan to keep going in the future, which is awesome to hear. Um, so it's going to be really exciting to see which machines it will be adding to the lineup later on. Next up, they talked about the boost system, which was another one of their priorities because they wanted to focus on the speed of the gameplay and they also wanted some kind of system in there to make the players feel like new types and this system kind of combined those two into one. Then another important thing was that they wanted to have less locked classes. Like they didn't want to give the feeling of I need to play this class or this mobile suit in order to win the game. But instead, they wanted everyone to be able to pick the mobile suit that they wanted to play with. And an example they gave was the Methus. It is a healer, but its healing ability is more of a subclass. It can still deal damage and actively participate in combat. So if you're playing as a Methus, you're not just locked into healing, but you can actively participate in the fun stuff of the game. So as someone who hasn't played it yet, um, it sounds less like Overwatch with Gundams and more just like a traditional first person shooter, but with Gundams. After this, they talked a bit about the network test, which included a survey on the most popular series. And I was pleasantly surprised to see the original Mobile Suit Gundam on number one, Number two was Iron-Blooded Orphans, a series that has definitely opened the door to a lot of new fans. Three is the omnipresent Gundam Unicorn, and four is the classic Gundam Wing. The Gundam gateway drug for my generation. They also said that as more people in North America and Japan get into Gundam, the difference between the most popular series is shrinks. Although I personally doubt that the difference will ever go away because of the cultural significance of Gundam Wing in the West. Um, then there was some more talk about the skins. Um, during the network test they had already implemented the cannon skins, for example turning the RX-782 into the G3 or turning the standard Zaku into Shars Zaku. But they're also going to be implementing game original legendary skins, which will come with their own MVP intros. And the examples of these legendary skins they gave were a silvery black Gundam with a shooting intro inspired by the anime, a golden Zaku with a really cool finishing blow intro, and a Methus and Ashimar skin that seemed to have some kind of glowing or changing effect going on. 
and they of course also confirmed that they will be releasing more of these skins as time goes on. And then finally they also showed off some nice stamps. Moving on to the SD front then, they first showed off SD Gundam Battle Alliance where they started with some quick history on the series and then went over the information of the actual game. Now one of the things they talked about is why they went with an action game as opposed to a turn-based strategy game, which is what most SD Gundam games have been historically, but not all of them. Some of the old SD games are a mix of both strategy and action. You had the old SD Gundam Force games, and of course the very nostalgic SD Gundam Capsule Fighter Online, which I'm sure a lot of people still remember, myself included. So basically, even though some exist, they are very few and far in between, so they wanted to mix things up by creating an action game. Um, then they went over some stuff that we already knew, gave a quick overview of one of the new Gundams, the Gundam Latreia, but then we got the quiz. Who's that Gundam? And the first person to get it right would win a Master Grade Tall Geese 3. And some of you watching this right now might be thinking, damn, that is easy. I mean, if you're watching this channel, the answer is literally on screen. It's right there. And I think um, I also have the model up there, but I think usually it's right outside of this, well, right there. Um, but it's right outside of the screen usually, I think. Um, but it is not actually as easy as you might think, because not only could you give the wrong astray as an answer, uh, but you could also just like straight up give the wrong Gundam as an answer. Um, with some of the answers being the Barbs and the Exia. But eventually someone got the right astray, won the Tall Geese, and we got to see the trailer for the Red Frame Kai in SD Gundam Battle Alliance. And then the most exciting thing was, of course, getting to play the game itself. And overall, it was pretty fun. Like, it didn't blow me away kind of amazing, but everything was as it should. The graphics were nice and sharp, the gameplay was smooth, and the operators were fun to have around. So combined with a varied roster of mobile suits and the ability to play online co-op, this is definitely gearing up to be a nice package. And on the Switch, uh, you can also have local multiplayer. I do find it unfortunate that you can only have local multiplayer on the Switch because, well, it's not like you can only have one controller on a PlayStation 5 or on an Xbox. Um, one thing then that also surprised me is the difficulty spike when facing off against bosses. Um, in the end, I was fine thanks to the healing items, but you can definitely give yourself a nice challenge by not using healing. And if you want to see some of that gameplay, I didn't personally record any, but New Type Seiji did, so I'll have that linked down below. And the other SD Gundam game they mentioned then was, of course, the upcoming SD Gundam G Generation Eternal. Now, we didn't get any new information per se, but they did promise they were going to listen to the community and try to develop the game alongside of the community. And one way they're going to do this is, of course, with that closed beta test. Now, it is a closed beta test, so not everyone signing up will be able to join in. But as an extra cool feature for everyone at the VIP event, you could give up your um, email address and you would be guaranteed a spot in the beta. Which then, of course, immediately caused a very long line for people to write down their email address. And like I said during the last Gundam news, things are looking pretty promising for being a mobile game. Playing through the story mode doesn't consume any stamina, and the main method of acquiring new mobile suits will be through capturing, developing, and producing them, with gacha serving as kind of an early access for newer mobile suits. So, 
Again, so far, so good. And then they ended the gaming section with Gundam Battle Operation 2. And the big news here was the early announcement of the Bound Dock, as you could see on my Twitter. And then secondly, they also touched briefly on the Steam version. Unfortunately, they couldn't say anything new here, and all they could say was that they're working hard on fixing the issue, and that they will let us know as soon as possible. Now, after the panel, um, I did try to push the issue and asked if there was anything more that they could tell me, because, well, I think one of the main reasons people are so annoyed with the situation is because we just aren't getting any news and then the news that did come out was basically just wait a little bit longer um, but unfortunately there was nothing else they could tell me at the moment other than again they are absolutely working on fixing the issue they want to make it right but there's nothing they can tell more than that and then the final panel was Jordan Void Roberts, who came to tell us more about the live action Gundam movie. And the thing unfortunately here is that they made it very clear that whatever information was given there was to be top secret. So unfortunately, I can't talk about any specifics. Again, I did try like to ask if there was anything that I could share, but the answer was not specifics. So at the very least, I can give you how I felt during the presentation. And overall, I felt pretty good about what was said. I did get the feeling that the director was passionate about the project and that he was someone who genuinely cared about Gundam. Like, in those earlier promotional videos, they didn't just plant some Gundams there to have him look like he cared about Gundam, and he didn't just say some things to make it sound like he cared about Gundam. Like, I could feel his passion coming through as he was saying the things he was saying. Now, I wasn't 100% on board with everything that was talked about, but... After the panel, I did have a better feeling about this live-action Gundam movie than I did before. And that then also ends my presentation about the Gundam AX VIP event of summer 2022. Again, a big thanks to Bandai for inviting me, and also don't forget to check out New Type Seiji and Niki Marina with the links down below. Another big thanks to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next time.